This is the story of how I built my very own e-bike that goes 33 miles per hour, has 25 plus miles of range, and only cost me $420 to build. Let's start from the beginning. About a month ago, I decided that I needed an e-bike because e-bikes are just sick. They have so many advantages, like you can go places further than walking distance, you don't have to pay for gas, and overall they're just a lot of fun. But there's one tiny problem. They can be kind of pricey. So I came up with an idea. Instead of spending one to two thousand dollars on an e-bike with the capabilities that I wanted, I would build one. So I made a few parameters. First, I decided that my e-bike had to exceed the limit of 20 miles per hour, because that's how fast most standard e-bikes go. Second, I wanted it to be reasonably affordable, since my bank account is looking kinda hammered. The last thing, and debatably the most important part, was that my e-bike had to look super clean. So basically, I wanted to create my own, better version of this, the Rad Runner 2. I did a little bit of research and found that my original goal of making an e-bike for $100 was not an option. The average motor kit cost roughly $200 alone, not counting the battery and bike frame. So I made a new and more achievable goal. For $450, could I make an e-bike that fits my criteria? So without further ado, I started looking for a cheap mountain bike, and after only two days of sweeping the internet, I found one. So the bike I got has a couple of issues, a little bit rusted, and this cassette back here doesn't spin very well. Um, but aside from that, it's going to be perfect for my project. So now that I have a base for my creation, I need to buy my source of power. I looked on Amazon for a while until I realized that even though I could get a motor kit for about $160, I still had to pay shipping costs. So instead, I went to eBay and found a 48 volt motor kit that was a tad more expensive than the one on Amazon, but offered free shipping. I also bought the cheapest 14 amp hour battery from eBay that I could find. Why a 14 amp hour battery, you ask? Well, to figure out approximately how much battery life your e-bike possesses, you use a measure of energy called watt hours. To find watt hours, you multiply the volts of your battery times the amp hours. 48 volts times the 14 amp hours of the battery I bought gets you 672 watt hours, which matches the rated power output of a Rad Runner 2, meaning my bike and the Rad Runner 2 should have similar range. So the first thing I'm going to work on is putting the battery into the frame. Now I have a slight problem because the battery is just too big to fit into the frame this way. And I don't want to put it that way because I'm not going to have enough leg room coming out. So I'm going to have to cut a little bit off of the frame so that the battery can slide in. So now I put the battery in, I just don't like the way this looks at all, it's ugly. I have different pieces of like plastic because I ran out of filament and it's crooked and it just doesn't look good. So I have a new plan. I decided to do what any good engineer would do. I'm going to cover it up so you can't see it anymore. The material I decided to cover up my mistakes with is called poor man's fiberglass. Basically it's like paper mache, but instead of paper you use cloth. So after I stripped down the bike frame, I bought some supplies and started mission de uglify the bike. Now, if this process looks wrong to you, that's because it is. After a few layers of my poor man's fiberglass, I realized I might have been making an even bigger mistake. The cloth I bought wasn't in fact cloth, it was more like a mix of cloth and paper, used for cleaning up spilled paint, and stupid little me didn't realize that every other poor man's fiberglass video out there uses canvas drop cloth, not the first cloth like material they found in the hardware store. So I had two options, either keep the disgusting cover and pretend like it looked good, or take it off, get the right material, and waste a whole week of time on my pro- I decided to go with the second option. I figured since I was going to take off the old material and replace it with new stuff, I might as well go the whole way to uphold my third rule and make it look real clean. So I covered the whole bike in foam board so that when I put the canvas on it will be nice and smooth all around and it won't have like any wrinkles and stuff like it did last time. 
So after making my first mistake, I did a bit more research on poor man's fiberglass. When applying it, you want one coat of glue on the inside of the fabric so it can adhere to your project. Then, after that dries and becomes hard, you want another coat on the outside of your fabric. Once that coat has dried, your canvas will have a real rough texture on the outside, so you want to find some 150 grit sandpaper to sand it smoother. After you've sanded it, you can apply one last coat of glue. When that coat is dry, you want to hit it with some 220 grit sandpaper to get out any remaining roughness. Then, finally, you can paint. Now that I got my battery mounted to the frame, the next part was installing the motor kit. It actually took me 8 minutes to put this chain on. I don't know, it was just a lot harder than I thought it would be. But after a while, I got it complete and there were only a few more things left for me to do before the bike was finished. I had to modify the old gear shifter just a little bit so that it could fit with the new brakes on. This was by far my favorite project I've done so far. I learned a whole lot from building this bike, but I also had a ton of fun. Oh wait, the list. Let's see, more than 20 miles an hour? <laughs> Easy, this thing goes 32. This is so fast. Ah! Cheaper than a router and a two? Well, the bike cost $50, the motor kit cost 180, and the battery cost 175. In total, that equals $405, and when you round that out, it equals 420. But, on a more sober note, get it, I did kind of upgrade the front forks because the original one was shot, and the first time I rode the bike, I could feel every single bump in the road. The new fork cost $80, so technically I spent closer to $500 on the bike, but the forks were just an upgrade, so I only spent $420 initially to make my insanely fast budget bike. And the last thing on the list was that it had to look sick. Well, I think it looks pretty good. This has been my favorite build so far, and I hope to be able to keep making these types of things. Comment down below what you want to see me make next. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.